not sure. Uh, professional sports team? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I think, do you have a, a subscription to the Sport Business Journal? Get one today. Like literally get one tonight. Um, because I, I think you just, you really have to understand the marketplace and you have to understand the language. You have to understand how teams make money. You know, it's like any other business. If you, you follow the money, you understand, you know, where, where the power is, right. And how, and how sort of that, that pyramid effects works. So I, and you, you can, you don't need to have, um, all the experience in the world to be able to have those conversations. You just need to just read and read and read and talk to people. And here's the, here's the thing. Like everyone wants to talk about themselves. Right. So, and especially you as a student, right? You guys aren't, you're not, this isn't an insult, but you're, you're not necessarily threatening to these people. And so if you create an opportunity to have a conversation, Hey, tell me a little bit more about yourself. You know, I'm interested, you know, in working professional sports and I see, you know, you've been at X organization or whatever you're in, X, you're in Y role. How'd you get there? Like, I'm really curious. Like I'll buy a cup of coffee or something like that. And I, the first day when I was at the DeVos program at UCF is okay. How many, this is literally what the director of the program said. How many of you want to be general managers of an NBA team or an NFL team? And it was like, and he's like, okay, what's plan B? Cause none of you are going to be general <laughs> managers. Right. And I haven't worked for a team. I think there's three paths really. Um, so I think go to sports management, try to fight your way in, sell the hell out of tickets move your way up. Um, you know, and Andrew has done the path. You get the graduate degrees, you get all the relationships and you go that way. I think that's one path. Uh, the second path I think is, um, you just, you, you meet the owner of the team. He's smiling. Why? Why? Okay. Um, so you try to figure out how you're going to get to them. So yeah, they won't, they won't respond to you on LinkedIn. Um, but we were with the Steve and, and Carly yesterday, the owners of the Colts and Pacers in town, right? Cause they're investors of ours. Um, so if you want to meet them, you just come like you, this is a plug, but I guess you just intern for us and you meet them like five times this summer. That, like, so that's a way, right? That might be the greatest plug I've ever <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like he could text Carly tomorrow if you want an internship with the Colts, right? He's not going to do it. He doesn't know you. But if you intern and you kicked ass this summer, like maybe you would, um, or you could just buy the team. Uh, why are you laughing? <laughs> so I, I bought a team this year. Um, so the the um, so I, I I always wanted to be a GM of a team too, like Andrew. And so um, actually, that's why I did Draft.com business because I loved creating teams. And so what I would do as a kid is I'd play Madden. How many people play Madden? With me and my buddy Jeremy, we, we met playing Little League Base. We played Madden. We love playing Madden. We would do the draft and then we'd simulate through the season because we just love drafting. And so the idea was to create a business where we could just do drafts every day with your friends. And so that's what draft became. I would take a pick. You'd get a push alert. I'd take Steph Curry. You'd take LeBron and Kevin Durant. And then it comes back to me. Push alerts back and forth. Social, mobile first, game. That's what draft was. And, we, and it worked pretty well. But it was based on something, just the game that we love doing. And we would always do that. We'd take picks and we'd go back and forth and we'd ask his dad who had a better team. And that would be like, the, so we said, there's gotta be a better, better way. So we thought fantasy sports and applying that idea, but in a different way. Um, so that, that was draft. Anyway, the point is I, I wanted to be a GM too, but there's what, 32 in the NBA? How many teams in the NBA? 30 in the NBA, NFL, 32. Thing. Um, so it's easier to be a US Senator, right? There's a hundred of those. Um, so I figured, okay, that's going to be a tough path. Um, it's actually easier to buy the team. So just make a lot of money and then buy a team. It was actually, it's easier than being the GM. Um, I can't buy an NBA team, but uh, this last year, um, we bought a team in the Australian League, New Zealand Breakers, with some friends, uh, Sean Mary and Zach Randolph. Um, and I'm on the board of that team. So it was cool. And we, um, and we hired the CEO, right? Uh, the, the team, um, the CEO has actually led, led the group. So he's a part owner of a business, but it was really fun because we, we play uh, against NBA teams in the preseason, uh, even though we're in the Australian league, but we played against the Suns this year and we went and we sat on the court and it, it kind of felt like we owned an NBA team. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, it's so cool. Like the little kid, me was like amazing. Right. Yeah, but it was a dream that I had to do it. So there's a lot of ways, you know, you could buy, there's plenty of teams. You got everyone in this room could buy a team. There's teams in Europe, there's fourth division soccer teams. You guys could totally buy a team, put a group together and buy a team. It's not hard to do um, at some point in your life, right? So that's really a goal of yours. You could do it and then make yourself the GM. It's an easier path. We only lost the Suns by four points, by the way. <laughs> well, that wasn't bad. They didn't have Booker, but yeah. He's an all-star. He's an all-star. And they, they played horrible. We played amazing and we still lost, but we gave them a scare. We were at one with a minute left and they were terrified. Um, so, yeah, meet, just meet the owner or, or make a lot of money and buy the team. Um, 
or work your ass out, you know, and like work your way up, right? It's three paths. They're all equally, they all might get you there. Um, but that the kind of thinking that I think you want to do in your career is just, if it's hard to go from point A to point B, like maybe there's an easier way around. Um, yeah. No, I was just going to say, you know, Jordan, um, you know, it, by a team, right? You might you might think that that, but that's I mean, you, you gotta you gotta aim for the stars, you know. And I, th and I think that's it's important. It's, it, a, it's a mindset, right? Yeah, I think that's really important, you know. And 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 you guys can do anything you put your minds to. Obviously, the only other thing I would mention too, just in terms of, um, you know, starting your careers in sport is uh, volunteering is always always helpful too. Like, no team is gonna turn away free labor just not going to happen so you know volunteering your time um, whether it's in on the community use side whether it's like in the game day operations you know whatever the case might be so but it is it's such a relationship driven business so I didn't know that Indianapolis was the, the 13th largest city in the country before I came here I knew it was a passionate sports town I didn't know how passionate it was um, so you have incredible teams here you actually have like three fortune 100 companies here I believe you got big successful companies you've got a downtown area it's all a federal opportunity zone it's really developing and growing you've got a lot of great schools not just here but in indiana broadly right so it has all the ingredients to be a really great tech hub and i think just location and geographically and how close you are to chicago and st louis and columbus and nashville and yeah cost of living's low so hiring employee you don't have to spend as much as we did in new york city or in boston like for your talent as your company or so